And we welcome you back here to the School of Christ International Program. At this time, we're dealing with an end time. We're showing how that that first civilization was the pattern, that God moved them through three give-ups, and then came that flood. Where are we today? That's the question that we're asking. Now, to understand this, not only from the physical signs, but from the spiritual is what we're looking at now. In our first lesson, we dealt with the first give-up of God. That is our last lesson. We dealt with the first give-up of God, an unclean spirit. That just simply means that God gave that civilization up to themselves. So they began to worship the creature more than the Creator. Seeing that we are there, today the celebrities of religion are without count. But now we come to the second give up of God. Now God reaches back to the antediluvian world and reveals the decay of the first civilization, a civilization perhaps as advanced as our own. And Jesus said of that civilization, as the days of Noah were, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, Matthew 24 and 37. Now, every civilization from then until now has followed the same pattern, leading to the final give up of God. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but because that but became vain in their imagination, their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. Romans chapter 1, verse 21 through 22. You'll notice God said they're foolish hearts, not hearts. They're foolish heart, not hearts. When we talk about the old man, we fail to recognize that it's not only personal, but it is a universal body of Adam, a corrupt system that's always the same, always anti-God. Their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools and change the glory of the in or uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, creeping things, wherefore God gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who's blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Now, Romans chapter 1, verse 21 through 27. Now, in the last chapter, we stop with verse 24 of Romans 1, the first give up, knowing God refused to, knowing God to refuse to glorify Him as God. Now, the apostate church changed the image of God into that which she could control. I showed you the Roman Catholic put him in the mass. Protestant put him in the baptistry. Access to God was in man's hand. God was reduced to man's size. Because of this, God gave them over to an unclean spirit through the lust of their own heart. Man wants no restraint. His bumper sticker says, if it feels good, do it. Doesn't matter who is hurt. Doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong. Man's desire is total freedom to do as his flesh desires. The end of such freedom is slavery. Now, the second give up comes in verse 25. Now, this change began at the turn of the century with the advent of humanism or so-called progressive education. 
humanism is described as self-actualization, self-acquiring what it was. The name it, claim it, message is, message is a religious, is a religious byproduct of humanism. If you want a better job, bigger car, more money, then just get God. God becomes the means then of self-actualization. The appeal is through the lust, the greed of the human heart. The pitch is, send a hundred dollars to this work and God will give you a thousand in return. The same greed uh, is required to send that hundred dollars as required to put a silver dollar in a slot machine. This appeal is to greed. It, this appeal to greed has been the serpent's mean of dragging God down to man's level. You shall be as God was the appeal that prevailed. The church has moved away from the Bible base and created a base the world could be comfortable with. The results is seen everywhere. The same sins that are practiced in the world are now rampant in the church, reducing God to a mere tool for realization of her own selfish ends, the church has become has come to believe that God would sacrifice truth for unity. Now, to accomplish this change, there's been a rash of new translations. If you search long enough, you can prove anything by some translation. Just look through them. Read the I read the testimony rather of a man who claimed to be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, while still a practicing homosexual. He said adultery for him would be to have an affair with a woman. Can you imagine such a mind? He said, God made me like this. Another man broke in and said, You have made a lie out of the Word of God. To prove his point, he quoted the last verses of Romans 1. Now, the reply of the homosexual was, the Jerusalem translation does not read like that. The devil will spend millions of dollars for a new translation just to change one phrase. So, to change man's thinking concerning God, the serpent has inundated us with new translations, all with the thought to make the Bible easier to understand. The natural man, though, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. According to Paul in 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, to the humanist mind, the virgin birth, the blood atonement, the supernatural were all unacceptable. And to rid themselves of the unacceptable then the humanist changed the truth of God into a lie. The pulpit was first perverted, and then that perverted spirit showed up in the streets. It will never be corrected in the street until it first corrected in that church. Society will only be healed when God's church is healed. Now, the church <coughs> is attempting... To, to get the world to do what she won't do. We lobby against the world's sin. And all the while, there's enough sin in the church to make grown men vomit. They change the truth of God into a lie. Now, that humanist mind ripped the supernatural out of the Word of God and made God a part of the human scene, worshiping and serving the creature more than the Creator. That perverted mind could not stomach the virgin birth, the new birth, or the blood atonement. So these foundational truths were changed, and a great part of the church was set adrift. Left without an absolute, millions were lost to superficiality. The fundamentalists and the Pentecostals would not accept the denial of these basic truths. Now, this posed absolutely no problem to the enemy. 
He simply addressed his question differently than he did to Eve. To Eve, he said, hath God said. In other words, he made God a liar. He knew the spirit-filled believer would not accept that. So instead of directly pointing at God, he said, Yes, God said so and so, but the translators have misquoted him. You're better educated than your fathers. In their ignorance, they, our fathers, came up with the wrong meaning. Now, the whole effort of that devil is to plant a doubt in your mind and my mind concerning God by questioning the translators and the pseudo Pseudo intellectuals have bought it. The Pentecostal would never deny the supernatural. Satan knows if he is to destroy the Pentecostal church, then the truth of God must be perverted. To do this, he makes the supernatural natural. <clears throat> Look at what's called spirit filled today. The supernatural has been taken out of the Holy Ghost. It's merely now the manipulations of man, but it's called the work of God. The works of faith have become the silly antics of man. The work of faith in the new birth is to be born again. The work of faith in healing is to be healed. You can know everything there is to know about the new birth, and yet die and go to hell. You can quote every scripture on healing and still not be healed. But by reducing the supernatural to the manipulation of man, the new birth has been reduced to a formula. God, help us to see this. The sinner is invited to make Jesus his or her personal Savior without no mention of repentance. The new birth is a power, a force. There is a new creature. One is brought in who has the capacity to commune with God and manifest God. This is a supernatural life. If any man be in Christ, there is a new creation. 2 Corinthians five seventeen. Reduce that to a formula and you've changed the truth of God into a lie and opened the world up to perversion, the second give up of God. For this cause, God gave them up in their generation to vile affection, to, to, for even the women to change the natural use unto that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman burned, in their lust one toward another, men with men work in that which is unseemly. You'll find that in Romans verse chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Now, the perversion in the street is the end results of a perverted gospel in that pulpit. Homosexuality is the judgment of God on a civilization because they changed His truth into a lie. A religious spirit sweeps the earth that believes it's captured God. This spirit is bent on using God for its own gain by majoring in the sensational. The God of the system is its belly. It is an enemy of the cross of Christ, and its only interest is in earthly things. The appeal of the modern gospel is not to holiness, but to happiness. Not to sacrifice, but to luxury. Its end, says Paul, is destruction, which means its goal is to destroy the truth and the pure. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection. The curse, this curse, has marked the end of every great civilization from Egypt to Rome. Our civilizations will not escape. We're well beyond the second give up of God, and spiritual people can hear the rumble of judgment. A civilization is dying. It is time to walk with God, stay in the Bible, 
continue in prayer, having done all to stand, God says, stand with your loins, gird about with the truth of God. Ephesians six thirteen and 14. Now, from the unclean spirit to perversion is a natural transition. When God gave them up to the unclean spirit, it was a pit without the bottom. Given up to his lust, men moved to destruction. All sin is without the body. Except the sin of fornication, it's against the body. God said, defile this body which is the temple of God, and God will destroy you. Now, destruction is evident today in the phenomenal rise of social disease. There's no bottom to human depravity once the moral law is broken. When that which is beautiful in, in, in its God-given place is made common, it loses its appeal, and the search for the erotic begins. Marriage is honorable, and the bed is undefiled. But when sex is practiced outside of marriage, it loses its appeal and leads to degeneration of the worst kind. It is a straight line from permissiveness to perversion. Now, the serpent provides the tools of pornography, and you open yourself up to darkness deeper than you can imagine, receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. AIDS is a byproduct of perversion. God loves every human, but he hates all sin. No matter who you are or what you are, God loves you. Christ died for you, but you must be born again. The blood of Jesus Christ doth cleanse from all sin. You can be delivered from the powers of that darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. But you must come to Christ in deep repentance. You must recognize you're a sinner before you can ever be saved. This civilization is about to pass. Once the devil seduced the church into changing the truth, removing the absolutes, the rest was easy. Governed by situation ethics, the world slips toward hell in judgment. Once the absolute is gone, <laughs> when the preacher ceases to say, Thou shalt not, when the line is no longer drawn, there's nothing to set the sail by, then you are adrift. All you have to do to go to hell is to do what's right in your own eyes. The lie began in the pulpit has infiltrated every fiber of society. Without the absolutes of God's Word, there's nothing left to give direction. Led by perverted mind, uncertainty, and indecision haunts the nation. All of this because the church of God changed God's truth into a lie. We, ladies and gentlemen, are far beyond the second give up of God. The pattern moves on from the unclean spirit to perversion, from the mind, then the physical. Judgment is overdue. We're living on borrowed time. It's time for you and I God's people to take stock of who we are, where we are on this timetable of God. We see all about us the physical signs that Jesus told about of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But what we've neglected to see that gives evidence more than any physical sign, more than the earthquakes, more than the violence, more than what we're seeing in the Middle East, is the spiritual condition of our time that says it's time for God to work. This, this civilization has made void God's law. There has to be, there has to be an intervention of God. We're, we're, we're there today. God's people are careless. This is the greatest concern that I have is the carelessness 
on the part of the people of God. They're not concerned about spiritual matters. I've watched discipleship being reduced to a one-hour church service on a Sunday morning. Healing is a positive confession. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is some kind of a prayer language. Being born again is going to church. What a tragedy of our time. No wonder the world is perverted. It has no light to walk in. This judgment first begins at the house of God. And the warning of Jesus over and over and over about the end time, that we were not to be deceived. That, that, that seemed to be the prevalent thought of his mind. Be not deceived. This is, this is a key. Keep your eyes open. In 1 John chapter 4, God said that we, we are to try the spirits. Amen. Try the spirits because he said, uh, to see whether it be of God or not. Now listen, there's not a more positive statement in the Bible. Try the Spirit, said John, or the Holy Ghost through John, to see uh, whether it be of God or not. Then he didn't leave us to guess what those spirits were. He said, for many false prophets are come. Today we're witnessing so-called revival have nothing to do with the Bible. We have them calling for angels, a man tracked in thousands of people that said God told him not to preach Christ, but to preach angels because they didn't believe in the supernatural. He's got some kind of a female angel coming to him, but the Bible has no such word about a female angel. So God says, search the Scriptures. Try the Spirit. You can be deceived, and we must not allow this to happen to us. I come here today telling you, we're, we are far beyond that second give up of God. This, this perversion has marked the end of every civilization. We have come to an end time, and we're witness the same thing that happened from Egypt to Rome. Every one of them went out of business with this terrible perverted spirit that today the world has virtually become a Sodom and Gomorrah, and the church must wake up. Your redemption draweth nigh. Those foolish virgins played with time. They knew they had no oil. They knew that lamp was out. That just simply meant the Bible said in John 1 and 4 that in Christ was life. That life was light. What that means when that lamp was out, there's no light, that means there's no life. They're religious. They're still going through the ritual. They go to church every Sunday. They sing in the choir. They, they may be teaching the Sunday school, but they're foolish. They know what they ought to do and don't do it. Where are you? Where are you? I ask you this question. I've asked it before. But was there ever a time, my friend, wherever you are, when God was more real to you than he is now? If so, you must recover or you'll never be a part of that raptured church. And you, sir, are you just religious or are you born again? You must be born again delivered from that darkness by the power of the living God. Turn to God, repent, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. God bless you. Keep the Spirit in your mind, in your heart.